E aí, galera, tudo bem? Estamos de novo aqui no DCS World, AH64D, AH64D. Como o título diz aí, o nosso produtor sênior de vídeo lá do DCS, o Matt Egner, está postando mais um vídeo do AH64. É, vamos aqui no fórum do DCS, igual os vídeos anteriores, pessoal, só para não perder tempo. Vamos aqui no fórum. É, vai acessar lá a H64D. Vamos lá em mini atualizações. É, pera aí, vamos lá para baixo. Ou seja, lá no final. Tá aqui. O vídeo hoje será sobre rock, ou seja, foguetes, coisinha simples. Eu dei uma olhada, uma pré-olhada aqui. <risos> E o vídeo dele tem mais de 20 minutos, por isso eu não vou perder tempo aqui não, pessoal. Naquele esqueminha, não esqueça de compartilhar o vídeo e não esqueça de assinar o canal, pessoal. Sabe como é que é o YouTube aqui? Os caras pegam no pé da gente. Eu já deixei ele pré-carregado aqui. Naquele esquema, eu vou deixar com legendas em português, mas vocês sabem como é que é as legendas de português aqui no DCS, né? E todo mundo sabe que o pessoal do DCS está querendo lançar ele no primeiro trimestre de 2022. Vai que eles lançam um pouquinho antes, né? Por isso vamos postar aqui mais um vídeo sobre foguete agora, H64D. Deixa eu só carregar o vídeo aqui, pessoal. É, bora lá, mete egg, né? Early access release will include the M151 hype. Hey everyone, Wags here from Eagle Dynamics. In this DCS AH-64D video, we'll talk about the use of unguided rockets. The AH-64D uses the M261 rocket pod with up to two pods per stub wing. At early access release, we'll include the M151 high explosive, M229 high explosive 17 pounder, M257 illumination, M274 smoke and M282 multipurpose penetrator 2.75 inch rockets. While it's possible for the CPG to employ rockets, it's very seldom done outside of training. Rather, the rockets are the domain of the pilot. The CPG earns its keep by providing accurate laser ranging and steering commands to the pilot via the rocket steering cursor and the TADS. This is termed co op mode. And I'll show you this later in the video. All right, rocket time. So let's first uh, zoom in down here to our two MPDs or multi purpose displays. And we can see that we have the uh, weapon page up on the left MPD and the uh, tactical situation display or the TSD up on the right. And the first thing I'm going to do is I want to set uh, waypoint one as my direct to navigation source. So as you may recall from the TSD route video, we'll go to route, go to direct. Now I'm gonna move my cursor from the left to the right display, place the cursor over the symbol I want, in this case, waypoint one, and depress. And we can see we have a, a brighter green line from our current location to waypoint one, and that marks our direct two. Uh, further, if we were to look over in that direction, and we go from hover symbology to say transition or cruise, we can see that uh, home plate symbol out there indicating uh, the location of our direct two. And go back to hover symbology. Uh, next, at uh, waypoint two, I have a bunch of targets that we're gonna use for our practice today. And I wanna make that my acquisition source, which will also use that as our nav range. So to do that, there's uh, two primary ways. You could go to the cord page, weapons and hazards, and select the uh, waypoint there. Or what I like to do, is go to the cursor acquisition bezel button, select that, place the cursor over the symbol I want, depress, and now we can see down here at R6, we have acquisition to W02 or waypoint two, uh, also mirrored on the weapon page and also mirrored down here on the TDU. I'll bring it out of freeze. Okay, let's talk about the weapon page now. So right now we're in the, uh, the top level of the weapon page and to go to the rocket format, I'm gonna go to B5 and the first thing you'll notice are these uh, four big green rectangles, and those represent the four rocket pods loaded on the aircraft, two on each wing. 6PD means uh, Mark 66 motors with uh, point detonating warheads. 
and in this case uh, I have 76 uh, high explosive dual purpose uh, rockets on board with the 17 pounder uh, warheads. On the left side we have our inventory. We can see we have 76 of the 6 PDs. Now each pod has multiple zones and each zone can have multiple types of rocket types assigned to it. If I had multiple types of rockets uh, assigned to those zones, each of the rocket types would be listed here in the inventory. You know, I simply select the bezel button that corresponds it to select that type of rocket type to fire. Now we also have a level of commonality of zones that need to be uh, set between the inboards and also the outboards. So what that means is for the inboard stations, again, we have multiple zones that can have multiple rocket types assigned. And for the inboard stations, uh, all the zones must have the same rocket type assigned. And it's the same thing for the outboard rocket pods, that all the zones must have the exact same rocket assignments. Now on top of that, uh, there's what's called uh, Zone E, which are the three tubes right in the middle, and all four pods would have to have the same rocket assigned to them. Okay, next, let's look at R1. We have quantity. Right now it's set to 1. This is our salvo count, uh, from 1 to 24 and even to all. I usually go for 4. Uh, the thing to keep in mind here is for a large salvo, let's say like 24 or even all, you're going to have to keep that rocket um, uh, trigger down. Uh, the entire time of the salvo. If you let it too early, then some of the rockets will be left in the tube for that salvo. Uh, just like we did for the gun, we have uh, various windows. We have our site select, our arm safe window, and of course our acquisition source, which again is waypoint two. Up here at uh, T6 for utility, and down at the bottom at B6 for load, we can see software-wise what the aircraft is expecting to be on the aircraft. So 300 rounds, uh, six PDs in zone A, B, D, and E. Uh, again, selecting these is not going to actually change what's on the aircraft. It's just what the software is expecting. And as you might imagine, you want to make sure that what's listed here is matching what's actually on the aircraft. Coming back out. Uh, again, just like with the gun, we have our uh, range setting for manual and automatic down at B6. But for today, we're going to do two different uh, types of range source. We're going to do a nav range. Uh, based on our acquisition source, and then we're going to do a co-op, which is a lot of fun. Yeah, let's talk about some of the symbology again. So we talked about the uh, home plate symbol for the Direct 2. Another symbol is this uh, broken plus sign, and that is our acquisition source, which is currently, again, as you may recall, pointing to Waypoint 2. And this is actually called your Q line of sight reticle. Always in the center of your HDU is a solid plus sign, and this is your line of sight reticle. So line of sight reticle, cued line of sight reticle. Uh, I don't make this up. Uh, next, we have our uh, head tracker, which is this broken diamond symbol. And this is always right off the nose along the aircraft data line, or ADL. Uh, naturally, if you look off to the left or look off to the right, we're not going to see it anymore. And why this is important is because we fire rockets, uh, except for a little uh, gyroscopic effect, it's going to be coming off directly uh, off the front of the aircraft, you know, not going side to side like you would a guided missile shot. So for this uh, first attack, when we do a nav range, we're going to be using that as our primary reference for aiming in azimuth. So I think we're ready to uh, lift and get going. Now, naturally, in a later video, I'll be going over uh, taxi takeoff and landing in much greater detail. And I'll back out of my pad. And we'll head over to the runway. And once I'm over about six knots, I'll go from hover to 
transistor sy symbology. Now we have our uh, FPV or our flight path vector up on the HDU. And right now about a uh, half ball off to the left and I'll adjust this a little bit later. Eventually what we're going to do is we're going to aerodynamically trim the aircraft so we have a nice centered ball and this is going to be really important for rockets that we want to have uh, it uh, trimmed up aerodynamically so when the rockets come out of the pods they're going to fly true. Uh, torque wise I want to be in the uh, high 50s or uh, early 60s. Uh, bring it up to about 60 or so. Uh, first look at a, a new EW uh, radar coming for the US side. Here we can see our Direct 2 and our acquisition source out there. And I'll be using the Direct 2 as essentially uh, my initial point for the attack. Okay, so like I said, I'm going to give it just a little bit of a uh, left boot to center the um, the trim. Doesn't have to be perfect, but that should be good there. You know, unlike a uh, like a fixed wing aircraft, we're not going to have our FPV uh, centered uh, in the middle of the display. It's going to be offset uh, to the right, like you see here. Uh, next, let's go ahead and uh, action up the weapon. So we're going to go left on the WAS switch or the weapon action switch. And next we'll hit the safe arm button. And finally, we'll turn off the uh, weapon guard over the cyclic trigger. And at this point now, we have a hot weapon trigger. Now once I action the weapon, we can see the uh, rocket steering cursor, which is the dashed I-beam. And in this mode, when we're looking directly forward, it will be centered in our HDU. But if I were to look off to the right, it would be off to the right, directing me to come back to the left. And conversely, if I'm looking off to the left, it will direct me to come back to the right. And you'll notice also that it's dashed, and it will be dashed when it's in valid range or it cannot meet the articulation limit based on where my head is looking. Let's come back over. And again, as I move up, it'll articulate up for range. And if I look down, it's going to articulate the pods down for decreased range. And this will be important a little bit later. And also, if we have an invalid articulation, we're going to see a pylon limit message uh, just above the high action display. And for a rocket attack, I like to have uh, a good bit of elevation for a nice uh, shallow dive angle. Uh, allow me to group those rockets a bit better and also see the target a bit better. And I'll commence the attack at about uh, three clicks out. We can see we're uh, 5.1, 5.0 clicks out. Uh, ball is centered enough. And it's important to remember that the, uh, the rockets, it's very much an area weapon system. So don't expect uh, massive accuracy your first time. It's very much a case of shoot, adjust, shoot. And what I'll be doing is I'm going to aim it by placing the very extreme right end of the head tracker over the target area and then adjust the eye beam up and down like this at the same target range where my acquisition source is. So 3.8. It's also important to remember that the I-beam is not like a CCIP reticle, which you'd expect, say, like in a fixed-wing aircraft like a Viper or a Hornet. That's uh, simply not how it's going to work. Okay, so I'm going to start pitching down a bit. Placing the head tracker in the area. A little lower. A little lower. And good hits. And 
and definitely much more so than say a guns and particularly hellfire our rockets are very much a skill-based weapon that it takes time and practice to get really proficient at using them this is the way and no doubt i still have a long way to go on this get set up for you a second attack and we'll take a look at this one more time And I'll head out to about 4.5 clicks and then hook back in. So like I was saying before, um, unlike uh, games from the past where you'd use the I-beam as a CCI pipper, that's really not what it's doing here. It's more think of the I-beam as directing you to the general azimuth of the target but more so in adjusting the elevation, particularly in either a manual or an automatic attack, or in this case, with a nav attack, where I'm basing my range on the range to the uh, designated acquisition source. Oh yes, definitely far enough, let's head back in. Yeah, I'm gonna get some altitude. You could certainly do it at a, a more shallow angle for the rocket attack, but you're going to have a lot more spread in the rockets, and it's also a lot more difficult to uh, see the target at a low angle. And general engagement, anywhere between three to two clicks out. Uh, generally, you don't want to get too much closer because then you uh, expose yourself to return fire. You can see we have uh, 64 rockets remaining. Four point five out. So again, on the uh, HDU, we can see we have a nice center ball. We're tracking to uh, Waypoint 2 as our acquisition source. Our site is HMD. Range is 3.6 out. Okay, I'll do a little longer range shot here. So again, I'm going to raise my head up to adjust range. Set the head tracker at the very right side of it onto the target area. Shoot, adjust, adjust. Run away! Run away! Okay, so that's how to do it with uh, a nav range source. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it with the help of our front seat or our CPG. And what I'll be doing is I'm going to direct him, uh, George in this case to uh, locate a target, and he's going to help me with the aiming. And this could be done either in network play with a buddy, or again with George, and George is certainly going to be a topic for a later video. So let's actually uh, bring him up. I'm going to set him to rockets to action on his end. So we see rockets in the center and the uh, bottom uh, right corner of the display. I also see in the uh, to the right of the high action display at the bottom of the H HDU, we have co-op, meaning that we're working together on this one. Okay, I'm gonna start hooking around. And I think what you'll find is uh, co-op, uh, if you can manage it, is certainly the easiest and most accurate way to deliver rockets on target. Uh, the other ways, whether it's manual, automatic, or nav, uh, takes a little bit of practice and uh, Kentucky windage uh, to get it right. There's a target out there. Fifty-two rockets remaining. Okay, let's come back in. Mm. 
<clears throat> okay, so I'm going to have our buddy in the front take a look over there. Tell me what he sees. See some infantry. Say, so, okay, let's go hit him. Now at this point, all I'm going to do is fly the aircraft to place the I-beam over the line of sight cursor. Right about there. Super easy. So again, just lining the two up and fire. And loose. Okay, so uh, that's a look at using the rockets, both in nav ranging as well as co-op ranging. And again, I think you'll find that uh, co-op is definitely easier, but uh, using nav, it's more of a challenge, but I think in the end, if you can get it right, it's a lot more rewarding. Anyhow, folks, I very much hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. É, parceiro, finalmente ele fez um vídeo bom. Finalmente ele fez um vídeo bom. Dos armamentos, dos armamentos. Esse, é esse é o segundo, né? Primeiro ele mostrou o canhão e agora é o foguete. Esse aqui ficou... O uso do foguete aqui pareceu mais promissor que o, que o canhão, né? Se bem que o canhão é aquela coisa mais individual, mas o foguete aqui ficou interessante. Você viu que ele parece que deu uma simulada com o Jorge ali, o piloto aí dele, que é o atirador, né? No caso ali, ele tá na posição do piloto, né? Rapaz do céu, o trem tá ficando bom, o trem tá ficando bom, viu? Quando a máquina chegar, vocês vão ver. Vai demorar a gente postar vídeo, pessoal. Vai ter de ler o manual, ver a especificação. E você sabe que os gringos vão estar tá na nossa frente. Quando você começar a colocar vídeo, os caras já vão estar tá tudo ninja. Mas naquele esquema, né? Mais tarde do que nunca, né? DCS World, H64D, Matt Egner postando mais um vídeo. <risos> é, mais um vídeo, pessoal. A previsão de lançamento é naquele esquema, final do primeiro trimestre, ou seja, final de março, janeiro, fevereiro, março. Se nós dermos uma sortinha, eles vão soltar um pouquinho antes, acredito eu. Não esquece de assinar o canal e principalmente não esqueça de compartilhar o vídeo, pessoal. DCS World, H64D. Valeu, fui!